Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Higher Density Living. It feels good to be back on the mic here in the studio with Jason. I got to say, I've missed him a lot not being yes. here in person. You yes, know? it's it's, uh, it's way better in person. But what do we do when we got our time? We podcast. <laughs> podcast. Why would I spend my time trying to just like make small talk? <laughs> or yeah, ca- why that. catch up when we can podcast? So uh, today, um, we have a pretty interesting thing here. It's uh, We speak a lot about free will. Yes. We talk about the nature of free will when people restrict it, things of like that, like, you know, you have control over your life. Maybe there's a little bit of a destiny depending on the cause and effect change you create. But the real juice here is some philosophers want to redefine free will because they think that the function of the brain first itself may be driving all of our choices. So, Jason, can we get into this and talk about how uh, the Brits are viewing free will at this moment? Yeah, it's British philosopher Julian Baggini. Uh, probably pronouncing that wrong, author of The Great Guide, what David Hume, which I've read some Hume stuff, Mm -hmm. can teach us about being humans and living well. Um, And so he calls it voluntarist free will. And he says this, uh, this is Julian uh, Baggini in her book. Baggini, yeah, she must be Italian. Yeah. Uh, No matter how free we feel, our understanding of nature tells us that no choice originates in us, but traces its history throughout the throughout our histories and our environments. All right, well, hold on a second. Yeah, right there. Let's stop uh, she's, she's saying if we look at our own nature, then free will isn't even a function of it. Nature's just handling itself. But that's on the auspices that our world is completely materially driven. So David Hume was a Scottish philosopher and economist back in the day. He's written some pretty cool stuff. I've actually read all of his work. But he talks about a lot of these functions of self-responsibility and tying in aspects of nature itself into economic systems, right? And how you should look philosophically at your life. But Julian Baggini is saying, if we're looking at nature itself and nature is intelligent in its own design and it's doing its thing and evolution is occurring, then how could you say that your choices at the end of the day have anything of any weight if nature just continues to evolve regardless? But but we have to understand uh, and, and when we get into the raw teachings, there's a difference when you get into densities, then that plays a whole different role. You can, yeah. you can have different vibrations at different waves. I mean, you can create in the ocean, you can create, I mean, different, uh, cause she's going to nature and understand that. So th- there's these natural laws. We have these, but what know, drives nature? Yeah, exactly. She's assuming nature drives all right. Yeah. But then you have yes. to understand that at, at the most energetic level and the most non-material level is what actually decides the makeup for what is material. Right. And if, if we look at the raw teachings, we look at a concept of thought, and thought is the key driver for all, well, then how could you ever say that the material for, you know, came before the actual thought itself? I mean, like the Big Bang, even if you use that instance with no proof right. out of the gate, nothing existed before something else did. So then how could you still say in that precursor of our current scientific and understanding of physics that material happened before non-material well i mean you see like studies child psychology uh one of the leading child psychologists out there came up with this uh statistic they did thousands and thousands of parents and children over a period of 18 to 21 years of course as the child was raising yeah and they looked at the parents uh you know they looked at how the parents treated the child and it came down to if you had shitty parents you had great parents Mm -hmm. it didn't matter it came down to 50 50 why? Because it actually came down to that. Like kids always making choices. Yeah. What is choice? Yes. The choice in life is to do or to not do, right? right? That's why they call it the choice. You live the choice. And a function of these choices are the catalyst for all the steps in evolution you choose to take, whether they are fast ones or slow ones, ones that harm you or ones that help you. Right. That's right. a 50 50 function of choice to do or not to do, action, inaction. But. Yeah. In the evolutionary biological sense of this in our brains, we're not dumb apes. We still have the ability to make choices here. But the function is how much of the brain then in the self is managing the choices before we're even conscious of the fact Mm, we're making the choice. Yes. Is that fair? So how much of the subconscious is actually at play in your decision making rather than you saying, I understand my subconscious and I understand my conscious self Mm, in my decision making as a total. I love that. Yeah. And then uh, something that, that, she talks about that. I think it's, she says, yeah, you can trace its history throughout our histories and our environments, but it's not dependent just upon environment because how many entrepreneurs have you seen that have, were raised super shitty? Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? So I mean, I used, to shovel, goose, I used to shovel goose shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, anytime you look at any type of environment, they can become a meth user. Right. Or they can become the next greatest uh, Elon Musk. You can use that for catalyst for you to alter your perspective, to take a more positive, evolutive, beneficial look 
at life itself and the choices you want to make, or you can use it with a victim mentality right. to hold you back and do no choices that will be beneficial to yourself and to all at the same time. Yeah, which, like you said, it just leads to thought. And she says, so she said, even leaving aside physics, it's, which I don't know how you can leave it aside. I don't know, but. It is what you are, but that's fine. Let's try and separate these things. Even leaving aside physics, it seems obvious that at the moment of any choice, so she's, she's looking at this moment of choice. Right. The conditions for that choice have already been set. Now, I, w- I, would, a- I would like to ask what conditions. What, what, is she framing, what is she framing as conditions? What are these conditions? I know that, okay, here's second order desires do not escape the co- ch- uh, chain of cause and effect. That's fair, right? So what is she saying is that when I get to a certain area over my life, I've made many, many choices. That essentially puts me in a position at this time, right now in this moment, like me being here talking to you. I have a choice. I can talk to you on this microphone or not. Because in the limited reference mm. of where I'm currently sitting now, yes, okay, over the line of cause and effect has led me to a limited set of choices. You tracking? Right. So then through this line of choices of cause and effect, how much of that was driven by the subconscious? How much of me was unconscious in my decision making that has now limited my choice making here? So is it truly free will if over time I've come to a limited structure of choice making? Yeah, and your subconscious can take – uh, frames, let's use frames per second. It can take frames and events and then construe them in all different kinds of funny ways. Correct. Like almost in, in a mythical type way. Yes. I've had, I've had dreams and we've all, all, we've gone into episodes on dreams. I've had dreams where what has happened that day, it changed the characters, but the, the premise was the same. Always. You know what I mean? Like, like the other day, uh, give you a prime example. I was with my girlfriend and she was talking about, um, some certain things with like her family and stuff like that. And there was like a problem with one of the family members or something. My brain switched it from my family, but same problem all the time. But, but, that, that, but that's a subconscious. But doesn't that beg the question though? Is it just teeing it up for reference for you to manage? Right. Not the fact that you don't have free will. It may in some stances look like that, but really it's all these continual archetypes that show up again because you haven't really learned them. They may show up in a different frame of reference that may look like you have limited choice, but really you've been making the same choice your whole life, but haven't really figured it out. You tracking? Yeah. I know there's bias towards choice. I get that. You know, and I know people will make the, I mean, you put, you know, Baskin Robbins, you put all those choices in front of them. They always go to their generic one every Correct. time every you know everybody do chocolate chip mint chocolate chip or i whatever. just had that last night <laughs> yeah so thank you very much <laughs> yes yeah. so whenever you uh, not that i was stalking you or looking no i get it yeah anything. you're just yeah. looking in my fucking freezer you know <laughs> when you're not there i just yeah. come in there <laughs> i take all my clothes here? off put gloves on <laughs> yeah, foraging <laughs> yeah. through the fridge just <laughs> just smelling your shampoo <laughs> oh yeah that's him is that white jasmine <laughs> yeah uh that's hilarious uh, and then she said this, she goes for, she goes at the moment, each choice and conditions for that choice have already been set. Yes. And to be able to escape them would be more than the ability to generate random actions. Well, <sighs> you, there still can be randomness in a video game's perfect example. Yeah. You I have mean, a controller, you're controlling the guy, but there's still random shooter. stuff going on. Yeah. Even though there's a limited set of choices that can be made within this world, this right. box that you're right. in, this paradigm you're in, but randomness can still occur. There can still be glitches, whatever it might be, or you can choose to do something that is so outside of your normal. It's such an outlier in your choice making that it looks fucking random. But we have to understand we cook creation source, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll say source. Source is a big AI that has machine learning based off of creativity. Great. So the more the more that since we're reflections of source, the more creative we are in the things that we do, the more we create. That's Correct. Where creativity comes from. The more that it learns in and of itself, and then expands the program. Right. We're part and parcel of creation. Right. Go out there, make a bunch of choices, mistakes, do whatever the hell you're else you're going to do. Yeah. Right? Drop pictures. Bring that info back to me. Right? right. Screw that up. Trash that. See that right there. Right. That was random. That was a random. Totally choice. random. Yeah. yeah. You here and me trying to have a conversation, but something falls over and breaks itself. You right. see what I'm saying? Completely random. But what do we learn? Don't move the mic arm like that during the conversation. Yes, exactly. Don't yeah. put the frame right here. So, so now, collectively, collectively as a group, United yes. learns up. We'll bring that back later on, and then the program's going to enhance and says, next time you go out with your free will, you're going to know this ahead of time. Yes, yeah, exactly. Repeat, yeah. wash, rinse, repeat. But and, and I don't think may, maybe not every decision is based off of purely 100 percent free will. But you have to look at it as a spectrum, you know, like in the sense of of 
the decisions that you make, and let's use a funny example. So there's an astronaut from here in the United States. Okay. And she had a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And she found out that the boyfriend was married. And he's mm-hmm. living in a different state, but was married. Well, he comes from another planet. It's okay to do yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so she decided to, he was in the state, and it was like five states away. Yeah. So she decided to, I think it was a bunch of Red Bulls or Monsters or something, put diapers on. And drive there, and I, I don't think she killed him, but I think she attacked him or stabbed Sounds him. Sounds like or an something. astronaut. Yeah. yeah. So that emotion that she came up inside of her, like, God damn it, son of a bitch, this this motherfucker, he was my boyfriend, and now he's married, he's right. mine. I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna be her irrational. I'm gonna wear a pair of diapers. Okay, so she chose to put on diapers. Yeah. She chose to turn her car on. Yeah. She chose to drive. She chose to be angry, and she chose to beat him to a pulp. Yes. What about that wasn't free will? <laughs> That's what even I'm though saying. you have a, yes. I can have emotion welling up inside of me. Does it make my legs start dancing crazy? Yes. Yeah. Will it walk me down the street? No. If I choose to be down a dark alleyway and get stabbed right. at two o'clock in the morning, who's to blame? Yes. Yeah. I am. Right. Yes. What the hell am I doing in a bad alleyway at two <laughs> yeah. o'clock in the morning? Well, and, and and also it's like like for me, most of the time, if that emotion starts flaring up, I just tell myself. Hey, you're Keep up. your fucking mouth shut. Yeah. That's what I, I, say. Have a, I have a chemical response that's happening. Yeah. Do I let the chemical drive me? Right. Or do I let my brain, which is extremely, my consciousness, which is fundamentally so much more powerful, right. recognize what's occurring, use it as a catalyst to make a better free so, will decision. So that to me, that's a free will decision when I'm choosing not to give in to the emotion. Yeah. No matter which way you call it, right? Jason, put your hand on the table. Lift your finger up. Did you do that because I told you to do it? Or did you just tell yourself that you're going to lift it up? Even though I said something to you. Right, right, right. You still had... I still had to have a motor skills. Precisely correct. You had to everything. think about actually doing that thing. I'm not driving you to do it. You were still making free will choices in that moment. Yes. Well, we're going to have to do part two of this. 100, part 200. Because <laughs> we just got one paragraph. Yeah, we done. got one paragraph done. I'm really excited about it. So everybody, thank you very much for joining us today at Higher Density Living. And a shout out to Quality Mazda NM New Mexico, one of our great sponsors. If you were looking to get an automobile in the Colorado... Texas or New Mexico area and you want an educational process in doing so, no better place to look than qualitymazdanm.com.